Okay, so I've got this problem here. A couple years back I made this cutting board out of an old piece of hickory. It's starting to split because I see I didn't cut the I cut it and the pith is still in there so it's starting to split. I could trim it down um, and make it a little narrower but that's not my, my problem or my concern. My concern is as now I'm baking baguettes and this cutting board is about a foot long and all my baguettes are longer than that so when I cut this is about two-thirds of a baguette here when I cut it I've got I've got no room left so I'm really not concerned about the the width of the board as much as the length of the board so um, got some baguettes here in the oven that are rising and my pan is my pan that I bake it on is like that's about 12 inches and then so it's about a, oh I don't know it's about a 19 inch pan so most of my baguettes come out at about 18 18 inches because I don't don't go over the end of the pan there so I've been thinking about doing a new cutting board and this um, this is hickory right here but an ash tree fell down we've got the emerald ash borers which have killed off all our ash trees and there's an old ash tree out back and I'm gonna see if I can just cut that ash tree up and make a new make a new cutting board that's long enough for my baguette so I'm thinking 24 inches might be a little long but maybe like a 20 inch cutting board I'd like to have a hole a hole in the end of it so you can't cut on that on the whole part but I'll I'll take a look and see what kind of board I can get out of the log first uh, I don't have very many tools just some hand tools and so we'll go from there okay so I haven't made it outside yet because I had to bake my bread but I'm gonna show you here what I mean Here's my problem. Line that up. How am I supposed to cut my how am I supposed to cut my bag yet? So that back on there. Ouch. Let those sit in there and dry out a little bit more. Okay. We're gonna let those sit and now I'll go. Get the rest of this. Alright. We're going to go fix that problem right now. All right, so I'm going to grab my saw. I'm going to take this one. Ouch, that's sharp. I might come back and use that one, but I'll try this one for now. All right, so I'm heading out back. Remember, there was a dead ash tree that blew down in our last windstorm. Check it out. Back there. Ooh. It's kind of muddy. I have to uh, try to get across this mud here. Alright, so here's the ash tree. See the bottom there. See all the ash borer markings in it, which have killed it. And I've already cut through one side of it here with my saw. So I'm going to go down this way about, I don't know, four feet or so, and then I'm going to make a new spot and cut through it down there. So 
So this is, I know, that's about, perhaps it's about seven inches across. So hopefully I can get a four, four inch board out of there, five inch board. We'll see. Okay, so my, my idea is this. I've changed it a little bit. I'm not just going to get a cutting board. I'm going to see if I can get a decent, two decent boards out of here. So I'm going to go for about 54 inches. So right up to about this little branch here is 54 inches. So I'm going to cut it right there. And I'm going to see if I can get two boards, one on each side of the pith. So one will be used for my cutting board and one, let's see if I can make something else. Not quite sure yet. Might, might see if I can make a mash pedal. We'll see. Okay, I'm about a quarter of the way through. Taking a little break here. It's way warmer than I thought, so I'm a little overdressed. About 55. I'm going to have to get some boards. This is all the bark I peeled off so I can stand on that and not get too muddy. I'm going to put some boards under there. Maybe some of these dead logs over here. Get those under there so it doesn't get all full of mud. I'm going to cut through it in just a second here. All right, we've got about a third to go here. I think I'm going to start a GoFundMe page for a chainsaw. That'll help. <sighs> Even a battery-powered something or other. Alright, almost through. Just a little piece. I probably should have tried to cut that on the bottom so it won't split. But anyway, we'll see what we got. There we go. What's that look like? Oh, that's nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Two, 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 three, two, four. Um, twenty-four. Down there, there so you can see it. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. 27, 28, 29, 29 or 30 years old, and the lash borers took you out. Not going to be able to carry that sucker, but anyway, we'll see. I can figure out how to get it back to the house. Whew. Okay, that's the craziest thing I've done in a while. I carried the sucker back to the house and I can't remember if there was a Arnold Schwarzenegger or Jean-Claude Van Damme movie where he carries this log. Oh my goodness. This little stick got me wiped out, but got it back to the house. Let's see how I did here with measuring it. 54 inches, That's my guess. Okay, so I got a board 
board nailed on there right down from the pith. This took me forever. Now I've got technical difficulty and it's too dark so we're going to start over another day but in the meantime I'm going to paint up the ends. I don't know if I even need to do that but why not paint up the ends. We'll get this thing all tucked away and I'm going to start over when I can see better. Okay, so my idea is to run the skill saw down this board, but it is not 90 degrees, so I'm going to have to adjust it to fit that line. And I may switch to a chainsaw at some point, but for now this is what I'm going with. And my 7 and a quarter inch saw is only going to be able to cut about 3 inches through this log anyway. So I may have to finish it off by hand, but we'll see how we do here. Give it a couple more passes and before I give up. Alright, so checking the progress here. This is either proof of concept or proof of uh, patience or maybe proof of something else. But it's my fifth cut. Keep dialing in the uh, straightness. So I'm pretty much on the line to go through the pith. And it doesn't work so bad if you go slow. You can see I've missed a, a couple, but it's it's not bad overall. And then on this side, still hitting the line, still hitting the line on this side too. So I think I'm gonna do I can probably get two more passes, half an inch and a half an inch, and then I'm gonna have to flip it over. All right, so I'm back. Only one more pass there, and you can see I did not even gain that much, eighth of an inch or so. So that is only a two inch, two inch cut on my eight inch log, which means if I get two inches on that, I've only got four inches, which means that's not even halfway through it. So I line the top up. Looks like it's a different angle, so really no way I'm going to hit that, but I'm going to try, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I just made my second pass on the top, and somehow my board must have a twist in it down there because I got it on this side. I'm starting to come off a little bit on this side. So I put a shim under there. What could go wrong with a shim? But we're getting closer. I think two more passes. And this part's gonna be done. Then I'll have to figure out how to cut the remaining four inches. Well, the shim worked. I'm back on track. I didn't take very much off, but I did even it out. So I think I got one more pass. Possibly two, but probably one. Not bad. Just one pass on this side. Definitely get a rhythm. Pretty much straight on on that one versus the first side. But that's going to leave me with what do we got here? Yeesh. <laughs> Basically four inches. Love to say three and three quarters, but it's going to be four. Shim didn't even kill me. That actually helped on the back end. Kind of got her back, back straightened out over there. And it's getting dark again. But not bad, it's about 44 degrees out here, so some of the snow from yesterday's mountain. 
And I just need to think about how I'm going to cut through the rest of it. Okay, so here's my progress. Had the first line, but then I thought, if I'm going to try to cut a board, once I cut through that line with my handsaw, how am I going to get the second one? So fortunately, I didn't even get started, and I did all six cuts here. Changed the angle of the blade, and that was significantly off. Um, but this one is pretty much right on and pretty much straight. Of course, my first two were the best because the top of the that was the first one. Second one was the best. Third one. Fourth one, I kind of changed the angle of the blade. That didn't work so good. And this one, this was nearly a 30 degree, 33 degree angle. And yeah, um, that was not working so well. And I was getting tired. My hands are getting tired. And then this one, not not too bad once I got it, once I got it dialed in. But that's that one's way off here. So I don't, I don't even know what's going to happen. So. Anyway, then I had the second idea of like, why am I going to try to do this by hand? Um, so I actually bought a long sawzall blade, and I'm going to see if one of those sawzalls will go up and down um, through that. I had to get a longer blade, so I got a 9-inch blade. We'll see if we can rip through that center board at least, or maybe I'll start on this one. Um, so I'm going to make an end cut here just to get the sawzall blade started. And then we'll go from there. But overall, it turned out pretty good. Backside, pretty nice. Except for over there again where I changed the angle of the blade. It was trying to match that outside line and got a little narrow, but... Those are two inch slabs, so if I if I get an inch and a half out of this board, I think I'll have succeeded. Okay, so I'm not saying this is a failure, but I guess it's a failure. So I'm four inches into this board and it took me seven minutes. It's fifty-six inches long. So what is that? Sixteen times seven that just sounds like way too long so the sawzall with the ripping it's a ripping blade so I thought it would rip a little faster I guess it's not designed for that of course which is why nobody else has ever done it but we're gonna go to the handsaw and see if I can beat four inches in seven minutes okay so that's a total failure I need a way bigger saw, a way smaller log, or a completely different hobby. But I'm at about an inch vertical, but I got back on an angle. It goes a lot faster, obviously, because you're going against the end grain, which is a dumb idea. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and see what I can do. Maybe I'll get an axe. Some splitting wedges. Okay, so you can see here is my cut with the circular saw, and it's pretty good. So I got an electric chainsaw uh, from a neighbor, and I tried to cut that, uh, but wow, it was just not not happening. Chattering all over the place, and you can see. It's just quite a mess. So today I'm going to load this thing up in my car and I'm going to take it out um, to a place where I've got access to a, a real chainsaw and I'm going to see if I can finish off, finish off those slices. And then I didn't even touch the middle one. The electric one was, well this one was first. You can see how bad a job I was doing. And then um, I obviously got better but still just couldn't, I mean, it was taking forever, I just couldn't get through there. So I'm going to get the gas saw going here and see what we can do. Alright, so getting it out of my trunk.
All right, so here we are. I've got a chainsaw and we're gonna go after this log. Got my safety gear on. talking about Whew. a lot of work on the other end of it but the right saw does the job
I need to flip it over. Thanks. So here it is, just rough cut with a chainsaw. You see stuff like that, some pretty big gouges. And like like this bump here, you know, just because it's
this side you can see look at that massive ridge in just a couple seconds here I can grind it off Okay, so you can see it's extremely rough here where the chainsaw, chainsaw grabbed in different, different spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of those high spots off before I let it dry. Probably don't need to, but just want to smooth it out a little bit. And for that, what I found works extremely well is got this 24 grit carbide disc uh, grinder so I just it's just a I don't know eight dollar nine dollar attachment for your basic angle grinder and I'm going to take some of the high spots off with this and this thing is just an absolute beast so 24 grit here in just a couple of minutes I'll smooth smooth this one down
Now we've got it roughed out. I think we're ready to let it dry for a while.